Tommy has proposed to me again. <laughs> really, Tommy does nothing but propose to me. He proposed to me last night in the music room when I was quite unprotected as there was an elaborate trio going on. I didn't dare make the slightest repartee, I need hardly tell you. If I did, the music would have stopped at once. Musical people are so absurdly unreasonable. They always want one to be perfectly done at the very moment when one is longing to be absolutely deaf. <gasps> then he proposed to me in broad daylight this morning in front of that dreadful statue of Achilles. Really, the things that go on in front of that work of art are quite appalling. The police should interfere. Oh, Tommy is so annoying about the way he proposes. If he proposed at the top of his voice, I might not mind so much. That might produce some effect on the public. But he does it in a horrid, confidential way. <laughs> I wish. Gertrude, that you would speak to him and tell him that once a week is quite enough for him to pose, propose to anybody and that it should always be done in a manner that attracts some attention. The key turns in the door and he's in. A big long sigh then of relief. Not for me, though. A big sigh of relief from him. He's made it. Safe. After he's pinballed his way up the stairs and into the room, I can hear him slip off his shirt and socks and leave them on a heap on the floor. I listen to him swear softly as the coins from his pocket make a clatter. So I move slightly in the bed, stretch like bagpuss, just to let him know I'm still asleep. Then he'll pause. He's probably standing there, rooted to the spot, suspended, like something out of the Matrix, on tiptoe, with one hand clutching his jeans at half master and his knees. The mental picture nearly makes me laugh out loud. He'll make like G.I. Joe across the floor and lift the covers, stepping first one clammy foot, then the other into the bed beside me. One day, I'm going to staple the bed close to the side of the bed. <laughs> Just to let him know that every night, every night since the day and hour we were married, every night coming in the charge of the night, I'd be awake and lying like a statue with my hands stuffed in my mouth. I used to put it there to stop my crying in the days when I gave a shit. But now, it's only to stop up the laughing. <clears throat> I had this boyfriend. He wasn't my boyfriend. I don't know what I was thinking. He was this friend of mine from work. He was her brother. He was a big... They're from Kildare. He was a big, coachy teacher. A primary school teacher. I met him when we were out one night. There's this place, Major Tom's, I was. I just wanted something to happen. He was there. Big, shiny red face. And I came up the stairs with him one night into the street. And whatever it was, the way the buildings looked, it took me back in time. And I felt that you, I felt that you were with me. This guy, Jer, he was always pissed. He was trying to get me to go back to his house with him. And I know this is weird, but compared to you, even as a messer, compared to you. He just seemed like such a fucking amateur. <laughs> Do you know, even in the morning, all he'd complain about would be his hangover and how many copybooks he had to correct. Whereas you'd be looking for money to hit the bottle.
I'll do it myself. Here, give me your sword. Oh, no, pa oh, God. <laughs> Heavens above! No, uh, you cannot be seen like this. We must leave at once to avoid disgrace. I desired. When I had almost fallen upon his sword, was he afraid for me? How did he respond? It was enough that I touched it, spoiling its masculine virtue. The unfortunate blade would have defiled his hand. Your fury fans a flame that you must subdue. There are more urgent problems facing you. At this point, would it not be more appropriate to think of the future of the state? <laughs> Forget that prim misogynist. Instead, concentrate on the future that lies ahead. I concentrate. 